Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and if you watched my unboxing of the Spyderco Gale Bradley 2, you'll see I unboxed with it a couple of sets of sharp dressed knives micarta scales. They are part of the decision making process of me getting another Gale Bradley 2 because I don't particularly like those factory scales. Um, they're one of my less favorite things about the Taichung factory that they use those. Anyways, um, I have decided for the moment at least, <laughs> that the scales I'm gonna be putting onto the GB2 are gonna be the natural micarta. The decision-making process was as follows. I have at least one knife currently in OD Green micarta in my collection, and I don't think I currently have any knives in natural micarta, so that is the reason. <laughs> um, I reserve the right if I get these on and decide I would prefer the OD Green Micarta because I made that decision within about five minutes, which is when I just finished filming <laughs> the unboxing of these. Um, I made, I, I, I've made i made the decision for now, I'll put these on. But if I change my mind, I'll put those on. Um, one of these sets, whichever does not end up staying on the knife, will be a set that I will give away, courtesy of Sharp Dress Knives. So thank him for, uh, for making that happen for the channel. That was really, really cool of him. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get these put on. On the table, I've got a couple of things. I have my little Amazon set of Weeha bit and driver thing. Um, I've got these Weeha like kind of designated uh, T6, T8, and T10 drivers, which are my current favorite um, tools to use on my knives. I've got some KPL chilling here. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this pretty fully and then wipe down um, where the washers are and replace what's in there with KPL. See if I can get it a little more to my preference. And then I also have this on the table because this clip is going to go on here, I think. That's my plan at the moment. Um, actually, you know what? Quick intermission. I'm gonna grab another knife and swap that clip onto here and I'm gonna play like kind of a ring around the clippy thing with <laughs> with clips because this one got the clip that I've wanted for it all along. So that one's gonna go, I think, onto my Scorpion PM2. Anyways, I'll be back in two seconds with the Scorpion PM2 so I can take that clip and put it onto this knife. One second. All right, we're back and I have this. I think this is the clip that I'm gonna put onto the GB2. That seems like it might be the way to go on this one. So. If not, we'll play more musical clips. Uh, but I'm gonna use that one for the moment. And uh, I also grabbed a rag in case I need it for any odd reason. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and just get the clip pulled off of here. I can take these off because I'm not installing those at the moment. Let's go ahead, get this clip taken off. Clip screw number one. I should have brought a little dish, but I didn't. So we're just gonna hope that I don't lose any of these screws. <laughs> My recommendation is to use a little dish, but I've already gotten up once. So, all right, there is our clip and the screws. Set that to the side. So those are off. It looks like these body screws are T6s as well. So let's check that. And they are. Did have a little bit of grip, like there might've been just some blue Loctite or something. Well, it doesn't really look like it. Let's see how these all pop out. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a pop to it. I don't know if you can hear that click, but it's not a, not an issue. They're still coming out. This is a nice sharp driver. There's uh, no damage to the tip of this, and so that helps a lot. And uh, you get a good grip with these. So it's part of why I really like these drivers. They give me a better grip than the driver in that set. Um, all of the bits in that set are good as well. All right, and there's another body screw and another and the last body screw. Now all that's left will be the pivot screws, which look to me like they're actually a T8. Let's see if I'm right. And they are, so I'm not gonna need the T10. I wish, if I'm being honest, if I could, in a perfect world, make a little edit here to this knife, that these were T8s, sorry, that these were T8s, and that this was a T10. 
um, I, I think it's it's better to have the, the bigger sizes in terms of the longevity of uh, your hardware. But, all right, there's pivot screw number one, and here is pivot screw number two. Let's see how this comes. Excellent. That did have looks like white Loctite. Did they make a white Loctite? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> all right. So this should all start coming apart now. Let's see. Why is it not? Oh, there's one. Uh, yeah, this has been supremely <laughs> over lubed. If there's lube somehow back here <laughs> and all over in here. Um, in my opinion, that's just more lube than it frankly needs. Um, anyway, that's what she said, I guess. Let's go ahead and get this other scale off of here. Come on, there we go. There's the other scale, also all gunked up. Yeah, so let's get this all the way apart, and then I will wipe it down, and we'll... Uh, We'll put fresh KPL on it instead of whatever this currently is. Don't quite know what that is, but I don't want to lose it. <laughs> so let's make sure I don't. Is there another one? No, there's only one of it. It's not the stop pin. Where did that come from? I don't know. We'll figure out when we put it back together, I guess. Oh, that's cool. So it looks like the barrel spacers are actually, at least this one is, D-shaped. Oh, these two are on this side. So that's cool, the barrel spacers. Um, that's why it was fairly easy to get the screws out of them without just spinning it. They've got a little a little slot. That one's, uh, they're all D-shaped, but yeah, cool. All right, so I'm gonna wipe this down right quick. I'm gonna leave the pivot in there. Just gonna use the rag and get it all off of there as much as I can. And then we'll we'll reapply with KPL because that is my my preferred knife lube. Get this all cleaned up. All right, there's one scale all dried off. Here goes another. I'm just running it in this towel. Apologize because the close angle it's a little hard to show all of this super on camera. But now we're Nice and kind of dried off. Set that there. These are not going back. Oh, that's where that little thing came from. And do these scales have a slot for that? It doesn't look like they do. So maybe this isn't essential, whatever this is. Weird. Yeah, that sits in there. I don't know what that does. I guess it just keeps the scale. It gives it one more point of like positioning. Anyways, I'll make sure I don't lose those in case I ever put these scales back on, but I'll wipe these down real quick just so I'm not storing them all gunked up like this. And that way I can put them in a baggie and keep them in case I ever put this knife back to stock for to sell it or I don't know, whatever I would put it back to stock for. Just in case. Doesn't hurt to throw them in the drawer of knife parts and in a baggie. Oh yeah, look, there's more of these things back here as well. So the sharp dress knife scales don't have those little pinpoints, whatever you want to call these. Um, but these are just like pressed into these spots. It's weird. That, there we go. That one's back in now. So yeah, it's here and here, but there aren't locations for those. So I'm assuming they're not essential. <laughs> I don't need to have them. Um, let's go ahead and get these washers off of here. I'll wipe those down independently and then I'm going to wipe down real good where all that lube was on here. Really get in there and make sure that it is nice and dry and cleaned. Now I'll do the washers one at a time. Just make sure that these... I just want to make sure that it's it's just my KPL on here. That I'm in control of this action. <laughs> there we go. Those are done. So stock scales are off. Everything is as disassembled as it's going to get, so now it's reassembly. So here's what I'm thinking. I like the idea of taking this guy, 
putting the tiniest dab of KPL right there. It's probably even more than I need, frankly. I'm going to take one of these little, little washers. Oh gosh, come on. There we go. I'm going to plop that down onto there. And then I'm going to take the blade and place that onto there. Oh, I skipped a step. I'm going to take the blade back <laughs> off of there. I'm going to put the tiniest dab of KPL onto this side of the washer. That's funny, it pulled the pivot out with the, uh, with the blade, didn't it? There we go. Now, I'm going to do that again here. I'm going to take this washer, if I could pick it up. There we go. Put that on there. Another dab here and here. Cool. Then, let's take this guy. And you know what? No. <laughs> Skipping steps here. We're going to need our stop pin. I don't know how this is going to go, if I'm going to be able to pinch this all together, but we're going to try. Let's get that in there. Great. Stop pin. It's now creating some tension there. Now, the sides that are D-shaped are all going on this side. So, I like that they've done that on those barrel sp spacers. That is a good thing. It's a bummer when you are <laughs> trying to unscrew a body screw that goes into a barrel spacer and it just uh, it just doesn't want to work because it's not keyed like these are and the barrel spacer just spins and spins and the screw isn't getting any looser. That can be frustrating. It happens on uh, several knives that I've disassembled. All right, come on. There we go. So now those are set right there. Now let's take this guy, set him right on here. Make sure we're getting our fitment right. Feels good to me. Now, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to just start screwing this onto here. Ooh, that looks good. That's going to be cool. All right, we're probably going to stick with natural micarta. <laughs> um, let's start chucking these little guys into here. So these were T6s. Not going to make anything super tight right now. I'm just going to be relatively gentle on these. Just enough to hold everything together. Yeah, I don't want to. If I create like a tension on these, then they might even kind of pull those out of the other side where those barrel spacers are sitting into the other scale. So let's not give them too much. Now, go ahead and toss this one. Right in here, that was our T8. Now let's hope that I can pull off a grabbing of this. I'm going to take it to the edge. There we go. Pinching all the way along to make sure everything stays in place. Oh yeah, you know what it looks like? Those barrel spacers might have just barely come kind of off of their track and I somehow got a hair in one. All right, let's. Here's what I'm thinking. Let's take these out of this side and 
and see if we can reverse which side we're going with. Keep that as together as I can for the moment. And then what happens if I put these onto here and then put this whole side of the knife on as one piece? We're gonna find out. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just set, I don't need that yet. I'm gonna set these D shape into here into here and into there. Now I'm going to take this and see if I can't screw these in one at a time. Just gonna start with the center one because that's the one my finger is on. Come on. We're unraveling here, guys. This is, this is the reality of scale swaps when you're not a pro. All right, there's that. There is, oops, that's a bummer. I got it. All right. Come on. Put that on there. There we go. Now, in a perfect world, I'd like to think that if I was just doing a scale swap and didn't want to get into <laughs> all that like greasy luby stuff that was in there, um, I would not have fully disassembled this knife. I would have just taken the show side scale off first, left everything else intact on the knife, pulled just the scale off, and then I would have swapped that onto the knife and uh, we would have kind of gone from there. So let's see here, let's see if I can get this to line up. That is on. Let's disengage that for a second. Let's see. Okay. So we appear to be lining up, at least for the most part. Let's see if I can't start screwing these guys in. You can see already the micarta looks to be kind of soaking up the oils of my fingertips a little bit. Okay, there's one. Oh, that's okay, we'll pick that up. <laughs> there's two. three. Again, I'm not really worried so much about tightening these all down super hard. Um, I want to get everything on here first. Let's get this pivot screw on. center to the point where I'm rubbing. So let's see which side I need to tighten to fix that. Well, that's better. Part of it could be the body screws as well. But all right, so the knife is relatively back together <laughs> and uh, it's not perfect yet. So we're gonna be doing some adjusting. Let me go ahead and work on that. Make sure that all my body screws are tightened down 
enough. I'm going to go ahead and oh, I need to switch bits. I'm going to kind of loosen and then retighten a little bit so where I can kind of feel exactly where I'm taking them to, tightness wise. stripped or anything. Okay, everything's fine. There we go. That's much better. All right. Let's see. Ooh, okay. This feels, <laughs> this scale material feels much better in hand. I like this quite a bit. Um, I like also that it's not drilled for lefty clip because this knife is mine. It's only going to be using right hand tip up. So I like that the, the clip uh, positioning is exactly where I want it to be. So now we've got to put a clip on it and I want to use this one. So let's Fold this up. I think I'm getting a little bit of lock stick there. That's more than a little bit. I don't know if that's. I'll have to see <laughs> if I can adjust that out after. We'll work on it. Anyways, let's get a clip on the knife. One screw, two screws. These screws are a different length. These are PM2 clip screws. As you can see, those little guys are longer. So we're gonna take these PM2 screws, set them aside, because they're gonna be used for whatever clip goes on that knife next. And then here, yeah, that lock stick's gonna, gonna need to get adjusted. We're gonna be playing with this guy. I think that clip is gonna look good. I dig that. So let's go ahead. I like to put my screws down into the clip, um, the, the screw holes <laughs> down here before I set the clip onto the knife. Um, I just find that that helps me line it up a little bit easier and just have an easier time with it. So, um, yeah, that's the way, that's the way I do it. If it doesn't work for you, so be it. Excellent. Perfect. Now, make sure they're all nestling on down there. I'm not going to tighten any of them all the way until they're all in place. There we go. Now they're all set. I can tighten them down properly. Good, good. And good. So now what I've got to work on is centering is still a little off and that lock stick. So I'm going to see if I can address that. But this is what the knife looks like reassembled with these scales on it and with this clip on it. So this is an MXG gear deep carry clip. Um, I think this is going to go well with the knife. Feels good in hand on first impressions with that clip on it. I like it. Um, in fact, it might even feel better than it did with that factory clip. So there you have it. This is the Spyderco Gale Bradley 2, now wearing some sharp dress knives, natural micarta scales, and I'm thinking these are just going to stay on here because I like that <laughs> quite a bit. I think they look really, really good. And uh, I feel like I've had more OD green knives in general, and I just don't have natural micarta in my collection right now. So this will probably be how this is going to stay. This feels better to me for sure. So there you have it. Thanks for watching me fumble through that. And uh, yeah, 
more to come on this guy. I will be doing my whole review process on it based on its current condition, although I'm going to adjust the action some more and probably spend quite a while fiddling with that. It would be longer than you guys would probably ever want to watch. So that'll be that today, but thanks guys. Appreciate you watching.